time to go down to Texas and talk to the man from Mars, who knows more than most people could ever forget. Happy anniversary to you and yours, my friend. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like birthdays. You, you, you get so far along, you decide maybe we not shouldn't remember them. Well, are you in the triple digits yet? That's when you start worrying. No, not quite, but I'm getting close. Right. Only got only got four years to go, and it'll be the big golden 50th. 50 years? You married the girl when she was, what, five or six? No, no. We were, that, that's we were amazing. both of age. Barely. In fact, actually, you know what? Unlike most people today, I think we we dated for about five years before we got married. Well, thank and, God and then, for that. And then we were married 15 years before we had kids. And, there, and, and you know why? Huh. Because we thought about it, and we and we accepted the responsibility. You mean children. you mean restraint, restraint. accountability, responsibility, yes, responsibility. I mean, unbelievable. You know, who, who does that anymore? What a novel theme. I know it won't fly today. Sorry. No, Good idea, not. kid. But come back later. <laughs> Jeez. No. Now, boy, if it feels good, do it. Some, uh, somebody, what, some more. Well, you know, seriously, I, I've run into so many people that they get married, you know, either in high school or right out of high school or right in the middle of college or whatever. And the next thing you know, they have kids. And the next thing you know, they're 40 years old and they're going, oh, man, I wish I could go out to the club. I wish I could go out to the bar. I wish I could go out and have some fun. And, you know, the thing is, when we had kids, it was like, well, you know, we kind of like to go out and keep partying, but hey, been there, done that. We've already done that. We'll just be responsible and 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 take care of the kids. Doesn't happen anymore. Nah. But anybody's listening, if you're thinking about this, you know, you know, have some fun and go out and live a little and find out what the world's all about. Date around with them, you know, and then get married when you decide that this is you found the right one, and then after a while, and you realize this is going to work, then you have kids. You know that's the responsible thing to do. Well, and the responsible thing to do now is honestly to think about: Do we really want to bring children into this world the way it is? Oh boy, I tell you. Now, when you did, it was wonderful. You got to think well, about that. I am so thankful that I grew up at the time that I did because in the late 50s and in the 60s and even into the 70s, the world was our oyster, you know? Whatever you wanted to do, if you got a little education or if you had some smart and you went out and applied yourself, you know, they, 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 the, they, the sky's the limit. You could do anything you want to do. And now when I, I wonder about these young kids, you know, 20 or so, and how can they afford a new home? How can they afford to, well, they can't. to do the things they're that no, we no, 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 no. supposed to have? And the, the right. answer is they can't. No, they can't. They're, they're moving home with mom and dad, or mom and dad are moving home with the kids. <laughs> with them, I know. And it's the truth. Yeah. And uh, that's well, okay. And, and the thing is, I, nobody really argues with what we've just said, because that's just kind of a fact of life. Uh, where I get called a conspiracy theorist and people look at me kind of sideways is that I'm here to tell you, folks, this didn't just happen. This wasn't an accident, okay? This is a plan. They have planned to drop the standard of living in the United States until we blend in with all the third world countries, okay, until we form the new world order. Thanks to uh, Bush 41. Never forget that speech. A vile man. Ugh. All right. Well, anyway, it's anniversary night. Did you have a little dinner, a little cake, a little something? Oh, we had a wonderful time. Went out and there's a, uh, there's a brewery in Fort Worth called the Raw Brewery. And, uh, they're a family of German background that have been making beers for, I don't know, a couple of hundred years. Yeah. And uh, a long time ago in the early 1800s, they came over here and moved to uh, Wisconsin, I think. 
Uh-huh. And then Prohibition came along, and it kind of put them out of business. But they went in the malt making business and weathered Prohibition. Uh-huh. And then here about, I don't know, 20 years ago, the great-great-grandson, Fritz, uh, had been working for various things and, just, and, and didn't seem to be real happy with it. And his wife says, uh, well, what do you want to do? And he said, my family's already brew- always brewed beer. He said, I like to brew beer. And she mm-hmm. said, well, let's mm-hmm. go for it. Mm-hmm. And they came to Fort Worth, Texas, mm-hmm. here in the middle of the Bible Belt, mm-hmm. and they created this little brewery. And I want to tell you, today they've won awards. Everybody loves them. That's and they, nice. And we went to, my wife and I went to a uh, beer tasting dinner at a restaurant near here. And you only had a sip, right? Only a sip, but many <laughs> little sips. And uh, with a wonderful meal. And it, isn't that great? Now, this this is the American dream. This is that's, where that's somebody true. That's decides true. this is what they want to do, yeah. and they moved on it, and they found yeah. their niche in the marketplace. Yeah. And, you know, this is the yeah. way it's supposed to work, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he, he didn't, uh, Fritz Rauer didn't just sit down and apply to the government and say, give me a living, you know, <laughs> give me a place to live. And give me they got a form for that now, don't they? <laughs> oh, of course but it's they in, do. It's, yeah. in, it's in Spanish. Yeah, and you can get a free phone. <laughs> God. But uh, Don't forget no. the free surgery, the free medical, the free school, the free food, the free <laughs> residence. Don't forget the free car that's coming, yeah, oh, the free phone. And, and you know what? I'd be all for that except for one tiny little fact. One little problem. I have to pay for it. Yeah. Now, if you the were getting it, the hell out of the, me to pay for if all If the of illegals that. had to pay for it and you got it, that's the way it ought to be. <laughs> well, I've always had to pay for everything I've gotten in my entire life. Well, how dare Nobody's you? Nobody's ever given me anything. These people come over here with their right hand out, palm up, <laughs> give me. They know. They got publications down there. All the benefits you get, get in a... Get and and I don't know, I guess what really bugs me are these people who grew up in the United States and had wealthy, worded, well-to-do parents who gave them a good education and gave them a good place to live, food on the table, clothes on their back, a car to drive when they were teenagers, and now they're liberals. And they say, well, everybody should have that, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, well, yeah, I agree, except, mm-hmm. wait a minute. I don't want to pay for it because I've had to work for everything. That's right. Well, me too. How long have you been on your own? Since what age? Since 13. I got you. When I was 13 years old, I went to my dad and I said, hey, can I have some money so I can go to the movies? He said, oh, you want some money? Get a job. He said, go get a job. Yeah. I said, no, nobody wants to hire me. He said, well, go, you know, go see what you can do. And I, and, went to Kroger, and I went to Kroger's yeah. grocery store. Can I clean up in the back room? Can I do any of that? Yeah. And I, no, it, no, it was pretty funny, actually. I, I went to a, a Kroger store, and I mm-hmm. asked for the manager. Mm-hmm. I said, you don't want to hire anybody, do you? And he said, no, we're not hiring. I went, now, that's okay, the fine. wrong psychological approach. Yeah, You're know, supposed to I say, did, you want to hire want to someone, do don't you? I didn't you? want to do it. <laughs> so I went home told my dad, no, oh. they didn't have any open. He said, you go back next week. So I went back the next week. I said, well, you, you don't really need anybody to, to work, do you? And he says, well, no. <laughs> so I went back. I said, see, they, they don't need anybody. He said, you go back the next week. <laughs> Third week, I went back. And I said, okay, okay. You sure you don't need me? He said, okay, we'll hire you to sack grocery. And so at age 13, I started working. And I griped and I hollered. But you know what? By the time I was in high school, I had pocket money. I had money, discretionary money, that I could spend because it was my money because I mm-hmm. worked for it. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I thought my dad was really strict mm-hmm. and really a hard case. But uh, looking back, I'm really glad he did what he did because I've never been afraid of being out of work because I always knew I could go get a job. Sure. Absolutely. It's called initiative. Yeah. I started when I was 11. Same yep. thing. Dollar an hour, and I earned it. Oh, that was my big gripe. I started at 75 cents an hour. Oh, I beat you. And uh, No, wait, wait, wait. No, I started at 50 cents an hour. Gee, that's insulting. And 
before long, I really applied myself, you know, because I'd been taught that if you're working for somebody, you put in a full day's work, and then you get paid, and then they, you know, they'll take care of you. So I really applied Four dollars a day? At 50 cents an hour. That's what yeah. I said. Yeah. So I applied myself, and before long, I got a raise. I got up to 75 cents an hour. That's a big and raise. And then, this is back in the 50s, and then what happened? Congress passed the minimum wage law, and they said mm-hmm. everybody has to make seventy-five cents an hour. Mm-hmm. So I was I was mad right off the bat because I had worked to make seventy-five cents an hour, and all of a sudden, just because somebody passed the law, now everybody made the same amount I did. That kind of sounds like socialism, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It doesn't sound right. It's supposed to be merit and initiative and reward and. Yeah. I mean, I'm honestly not... That's the biggest lie ever. What is the biggest lie ever? All men are created equal. All people are created... It's a lie. It's a lie. Absolute lie. One of the biggest con jobs ever. It's now, not, it's in, not in, true. in a country that's based on freedom and individual initiative and, freedom yeah. and democracy, yeah. it should be all men should have equal, equal opportunity. opportunity. Of yeah. course. And I'm all for that. Well, of course. I don't, you know, I don't care your color, your religion. I don't I, make I don't any care. difference. Everybody, if you've has got the tools, but let's you, face it: not yeah. everybody is created equal. Nope. And they don't I'm have a, the drive or the work ethic. I'm a short guy. There's no way I can play basketball against six foot guys. <laughs> don't they have those spring shoes you can get? Well, yeah, but let me tell you what happened. See, years ago. I heard about these elevator shoes, mm-hmm. and I got some, but somebody pushed the down button. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you got a new writer. That's good. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one before. All right. Okay. Well, they do have these shoes that supposedly the NBA didn't like, and they're giving people too much of a lift or something. I can't remember. What well, they got springs in them? Something like that. Something like that. Why not? I don't know. Why not? All right. So you had a great dinner. You had yeah. the anniversary, and it's yeah. it's forty eight, is it? Forty six. Forty six. You got a long way to go to fifty. Got I got four years to go. Jeez. All right. Well, you make but it. But I'm beginning to think that I'm going to make it. Well, if, you know. if I've made it through forty six years, surely I can tough it out four more. Well, if you don't, you're Coward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'll be there. I'm uh, wondering if the rest of the nation will be, though. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, that's I, another whole question. Honest to God, I, I just can't believe what I'm seeing. Nobody thinks anymore, James. You know that. You folks listening think. If you imagine yeah. what it was like. You've got a good audience. I know. Thank you. Thank, thank you on their behalf. They appreciate that. They are really good. They appreciate quality. They appreciate you. They appreciate your perspective. They know you're a real man. And they don't make them anymore. Yeah. Not many. Not certainly. Yeah. Well. I, uh, somebody sent me an email the other day that some guy's got me on a list of people that he says is a uh, the controlled opposition. Oh, okay. horse shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I wrote him back. hadn't heard back from him and probably never will. But I said, you know, I wrote him, I said, you know, what, what makes you think I'm the controlled opposition? I said, I said, nobody controls me. I said, that's what I makes said, you I, dangerous. You know, I'm, I'm married. I got a family. I got grandkids. I got, I belong to a church. I pay my taxes. I don't have any metal or uh, mental history or, or criminal history. I said, you know. I, I, just an average middle American, you know. I said, and yeah, I was in the army, but then so what? That doesn't make me an agent. I said that I hadn't had anything to do with the military since 